I know I'm a little biased, but college really is the actual best. It's also a little bit the actual worst. Because this entire time of your life is like, who am I? Who am I turning into? What do I like? What do I find interesting? What do I want to do and who do I want to be? It's the place where I found out a lot of that, but it's also something I'm still finding out. So when I tell you that we're doing a self-intro speech, it's a tough thing to ask because what should we even say about ourselves? What is it about us that we want other people to know? What are we even sure about? But this speech is important because no matter who we want to become, we are somebody right now. Somebody with a story worth telling, with experiences that are valuable, and a life that has meaning. Our voices deserve to be heard. I know, I'm being dramatic again, but who you are is someone special. This speech is a chance to pull the parts of you together that really make you who you are and share them with the people around you. You are an individual, you are unique, and you have seen and known things that I will never know, maybe that no one will ever know. And the same goes for me and my experiences. For instance, I own an accordion. I can play the theme song to mash on it. Here, listen. episode's a little different. Today I'm going to walk you through how to make your very first speech. I'm sorry. I think I heard some banging. My wife's making spaghetti in the other room. It's a wonderful thing to hear the sounds of spaghetti being made in another room. Before I do anything, though, I want to address any anxiety you might be feeling about this project. It's completely normal to feel nervous about giving a speech. It is especially normal to feel nervous about tackling a project like this just three weeks into your first semester of college. And you know what else? It's even normal for someone who has given hundreds of speeches to feel nervous right before giving a speech. Everyone gets nervous giving speeches. So let's talk about some ways to work through that. And also, I want to be really honest with you. I struggle a lot with stress and anxiety. I am stressed out, like, all the time. Even when there's nothing really there to stress me out, I feel it. So when I tell you that it's okay to feel stressed and anxious, I want you to know it's coming from somebody who knows how much it sucks to feel that way. I wish I didn't. What I'm learning is, instead of running from my stress, I gotta let it have its seat on the bus. I may not like that it's there, but I just gotta let it be there. It's only when I do that that I can get on with my life, anxiety in tow. At least then it doesn't chase me. Different, fe- different people feel the pressure at different points. Me, I get the most anxious during preparation. As soon as I know I have to take on a project, I start to get anxious about it. I'll be worried about something all the way up until I actually do it. Some people feel the most anxiety right before they start speaking. Most people, though, feel the max amount of anxiety right as they begin giving their speech. The first 30 seconds of any speech are the hardest. But once you get past those 30 seconds, most people begin to relax, and they tend to perform a lot better. So what can you do to help release anxiety? The best way is to prepare and practice. As soon as you know you will be giving a speech, go ahead and start writing it. Get it written and prepared with a couple of days to spare before you deliver it. What this does is it allows you the time to practice. My speeches always get better after I've run through them a couple of times. I recommend that you practice your speech at least three times all the way through. Maybe in front of a mirror, or by recording yourself, or by performing it in front of a roommate or a family member. Doing this helps you see what parts need more work. It also helps you to build confidence. It's the perfect tool to relieve anxiety, and since the speech is only three to four minutes long, it doesn't even cost you that much time to do it. It's a little awkward, I get it. But if you can get past that initial awkwardness, it's so helpful. Some people find a lot of value in positive thinking and positive self-talk. If you can visualize yourself giving an awesome speech, that can help you look forward to the process instead of dreading it. Tell yourself that your ideas and stories are important, that you are the smart, capable student we both know you are, 
and that you are more than up to the task. There are tons of professional speakers who take the time to hype themselves up before they give a speech. Get a good energy going and run with it. The last thing you can do is a personal tip from me. Oftentimes, I need to get some nervous energy out. I remember prepping for the ACT exam one time, and I was so nervous and tired and not into it. I was at the ACT building waiting to go back in, so I started doing push-ups and running laps around the ACT building. This got my blood pumping, satisfied my fight or flight response, and put me in a place where I was sharp and ready to go. You can't always do push-ups or run around before giving a speech, but expending energy like that is a great way to calm your nerves if you can find a way to do it. And of course, there is a deep breathing and meditation, which I have not yet found the patience to try out myself. But if you're the sort of person who likes that sort of thing, I hear it's an excellent way to center yourself before giving a speech. Me and all the other squirrel people will stick to running around buildings. So how do you actually pull together a speech about yourself? Well, what are some neat things that people ought to know about you? What are some important parts about you that you might want someone to know? These can be hobbies of yours, jobs you've had, experiences that have shaped you and made you who you are. Maybe there's one thing in specific about you that you want to share that helps explain who you are. I had one guy come in one time and give a speech about how he spent all his extra money on teeth whitening strips. I had never heard of such a thing. This guy defined his entire personality through how white his teeth were. Pretty whack, but it made for a good speech. Had another tell the class about how his religion was worshiping the old Norse god Thor. And others, well, they tell me about their time in band or on the football team. Find something that kind of helps explain who you are and talk about that. So once you've picked something, then what? Well, you remember outlines, right? You probably used one to make essays back in the day in English class. I want you to picture one. It's got an introduction, it's got a conclusion, and it's got three main points in between. This is the basic structure for almost every speech. An intro, a conclusion, and three main points in between. There's a few key things that I want to put down on my outline for speeches like this. First, I need to decide whether I'm going to tell my audience three things about me or make three main points about one big part of myself. That's a little confusing. Like, should I tell my audience about how I love aliens, Tex-Mex, and frogs? Or should I tell them the three ways in which the X-Files define me? Let's say I want to talk about how the X-Files defines me. Maybe I can make main points out of the characters. Point one would be how Agent Fox Mulder represents the part of my personality that likes to break rules and stand up to authority. I could tell the story of how my dorm supervisor, uh, I had to argue with him to let me distribute 4,000 tiny images of Nicolas Cage to my fellow college students. Maybe point number two would be how Agent Dana Scully represents the skeptical side of me. I could talk about how she always questions Mulder's conclusions and how I've struggled with changing my beliefs and worldview over the past several years. Finally, I could talk about how assistant director Walter Skinner represents me in 40 years. Old, fat, tired, stressed out, and losing hair. I could write these things out as my main points, points one, two, and three. Underneath each of these main points, I jot notes to myself about what types of stories and details I want to include when I talk about each of them. This will help me practice my speech and remember the things I hope to say. It helps get me organized. It also helps me see if I need to talk more about something. Like if I have a lot of detail for Mulder and Scully, but not a lot for Skinner, that's a sign that I need to work harder on coming up with things to say about how old, fat, and tired I will be. I probably need to note that Walter Skinner uh, isn't actually that fat. That's, that's probably a fair note. He, in fact, he kind of looks like a god. If only I should be so lucky. So why three points? The answer isn't especially clear. Human beings are still a little bit like critters. Sometimes we just like things to be a certain way. Human beings really like it when there are three of something. It just feels right. We remember things better in threes, better than we do in twos or fours. You can do a two or four point outline if you want to, but three, oh yeah, that just feels good. You definitely shouldn't do five or more main points. 
After that, our little critter brains stop remembering what anybody said. It's tragic, but it's the way things work. Once I have my main points, I want to write an introduction and a conclusion. The introduction's main purpose is to make people want to listen to me. Even if you don't really like being the center of attention, it's important to get them on the hook somehow. It gives you power over your audience, the ability to take them for a ride. There's a couple different fun ways to start speeches and get that attention. Quotes are nice. Stories are nicer. Shocking them with startling details is a great one, too. It's one thing to say, you know, today I'm going to talk about climate change. But it's a completely different thing to say, every five seconds, a penguin gets too hot and dies. One, two, three, four, five. See, now you have my attention. Another thing you'll want to do is throw in a sentence that tells us what your main points will be. This will feel weird at first. Most people don't think they need to say something like, Today I'll be talking about aliens, Tex-Mex, and frogs. But when you do that, it helps your audience to remember afterwards all the things that you said. And it helps them to be patient as you say them. If they know what's coming up, they'll be more likely to pay attention and not let their minds wander. This is called a preview statement, and it's worth your time. For my conclusion, I really want to give my listeners something to think about. Something to chew on for next time. And if I can reference my introduction, all the better. So the next time you count to five, I want you to think to yourself, do I really need to use a plastic straw? Or would I rather save a sweet, innocent penguin from heat stroke? The choice is up to you. It's brutal, but this is a messy business after all. I'd like this first speech to be three to four minutes long. It must be about you. It needs to have two to three main points, an introduction, and a conclusion. It also needs to have an outline to go along with it. I require that not to make you do extra work, but because an outline is a way for me to see what you intended to say with your speech. It helps me to understand your thought process so that I know better what to tell you in your feedback. And if you do both, I will reward you. This speech is worth 25 points, 20 for the actual speech and five for the outline. There's a rubric that I have attached to this assignment that can tell you what all I expect of you for full points. It includes things like the three main points were clear, or the speaker showed enthusiasm and confidence, or the speaker used stories and details to keep the audience engaged. All these criteria have the goal of helping your audience to understand and enjoy your presentation. How you achieve these goals is up to you and your creativity, and I do not penalize people for risk-taking or for marching to the beat of their own drum. This speech is a matter of self-expression. So don't think that I'm going to take points away because you express yourself. When you've written your speech, record it using your phone camera. You'll want to do this in a room that's well lit, where you can stand your phone up without having to hold it, and where it's at least quiet enough so that I can hear what you're saying. I know for some of you this is a little bit easier said than done. When it's recorded, upload it to YouTube and send me the link through D2L, along with the text of your outline. You'll want to copy and paste both of these into the provided text box. If you're worried about people seeing your video on YouTube, you can set the video to upload as unlisted, which will prevent people on YouTube from seeing it. Only people with the direct link will be able to, so when you send it to me, I'll be able to see it, but no one else will be. I want to reiterate that you all got this. I'm excited to see your presentations. I'm excited for all the ways you're going to learn and develop your own unique speaking style, and I'm looking forward to helping you achieve your goals. Go out there and kick some butt. I'll see you on the YouTube.